Welcome back aliens, my name is Tavin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. In the last video we have talked about a sorting technique which is bubble sort, right? In this video we'll talk about selection. But what's wrong with bubble sort? The problem is in every iteration, first of all we do multiple iterations, right? Uh, because we have to make sure that you get assorted values and at one point you swap two values. The thing is, in each iteration, you do multiple swapping, right? If you remember, we have done multiple swapping. So there's nothing wrong in traversing from start to end, but swapping consumes a lot of processing power. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to consume our CPU power and memory to do that. So swapping should be done only once and that's where selection sort comes into picture. So in selection, what we do is we go from start to end and we find either min value or max value depend upon different implementation. In this example, we'll go for the min value. So what you will do, you will go from start to end and you will find the min value. So in each iteration, you will do only one thing, which is you will find the min value. So let's take this value. So we have five, three, eight, six, seven, two, the same values which we have taken for bubble sort. So what you will do is you will go from start to end and you will find the min value. And we all know how to find a min value from a list. So let's say you, you will assume that the min value is the first value. So you will say, hey, min is first, but then you will start comparing the first value with each element. So you will say, hey, my min value is five, but then let me compare five with the text value, which is three in this case. And now you know three is the min value. So you will say, hey, the new min value is three. Now you will compare three with the next value and then the next value, the next value. And at the end, you will verify, hey, now two is a new min value. So at the end of first iteration, you got the min value, which is two. And now we know two is the min value. So what you will do is you will swap five with two, right? Because we started with five. So now you will swap two with five and your two goes at the first. Now you know after first iteration that two is the min value and it is fixed. So what we are doing is we are getting two different arrays here. One is sorted array, second is unsorted array. So the two becomes a sorted array. Now from the remaining elements, what you will do, again, you will do the same thing. You will find the min value. So you'll start from the first value and you will go to the end value and you will say, hey, now three is the min value. So after going from start to end, you got three as a min value. And if you can see in each iteration, we are doing swapping only one. So what you will do, you will swap the values with three becomes your second value. And now two and three becomes part of the sorted array and the remaining value become part of unsorted array. After some time, you will do the same thing, right? With each iteration, you will start skipping the values, right? After first iteration, we skip two. After next iteration, you skip three. And then you will now skip the next min value, which is five in this case. And the list goes on. At the end, you will get a sorted array, right? So let's try to implement that in this example. We already have a code here. You can see we have a sorting method and then we have a list of values and then we are saying sort and then we are printing it. This is what we have done in bubble sort, right? The code which we are saying here is a bubble sort. What changes in selection is the logic, right? So you will change this part. The list of elements is same. The sort method will be having the same name. We can have a different name, of course, but let's keep it simple. And now here, let's write the actual logic. Now, of course, when you say you want to go for the multiple iteration, you need two loops, right? Nested loops. So you will say for i in range. Now, what type of range I want to define? So you can go with min value, you can go with max value. Now, when you go for max value, you go from the highest value to the lowest value. So the highest index to lowest index. In this case, we will find the min value. So you will go from the low index to the high index. Low will be zero and the high index would be five. So you will simply say range of five, right? You want to reach till four. Now, once you got that, you also need a variable which will hold the min position. So I will simply use min pause, which will hold the min position position and by default I would say that is i. When your i starts with zero I will simply say hey min position is zero. When your i starts with one your min position becomes one and so on. So normally what we do is we say min position is zero right but we'll not do in this case is because after every iteration we are fixing the sorted array right and in that the zero index is gone so we cannot simply reuse it and that's why I'm changing the min position to i every time after every iteration. So let's use another loop here, nested loop, right? So we have to say for j in. Now the range of j, okay? So after every iteration, you can see we are creating that sorted array, right? So we have to reduce the size of our unsorted array. And that's why the range of this will be lowered. So we'll say range. It will start from i, right? And we have to go till, let's say, 6. Because the size is 6, it will go till 5, the inner loop. Okay. The only thing we have to do here is we have to find the min value. How do we do that? 
So we have defined the min values i, right? So in this case, if you look at these values, so the value of i would be zero. So min value will be zero, min position zero, and the value at zero is five. So we are assuming that the lowest value is five. And then you will start comparing five with each value, which is with three, with eight, and so on. The moment you find the min value, you will simply change the min value. You will simply change the min position. So you will check if nums of j is less than nums of min pos because by default min pos is minimum as per our knowledge but then the moment you find a value which is lesser than the min pos you will simply change the min position right and so in this case if you find it you will simply say min pos is equal to j so you got a new position that's it that's it what what you do so you can see after completing the iteration you only got a min position and at the end you will simply swap that's what we are doing from a long time right how do we swap so you take a temporary variable and you say nums of i nums of min position so you can see what we are doing here is we are taking a temporary variable and then we are swapping the index value i because if you can see we are going from start to end and we have to make sure that after every iteration you are getting one fixed value so you will not simply keep swapping the elements every time in the j loop you will do that in the outer loop so you will swap only once and that's why we are taking i index here not j so you are swapping the index i with the main position and at the end you will get this sorted array i will simply say run this demo oh it works you can see that we got two three five six seven and eight so values are getting sorted but i want to know how it looks like after every iteration okay so after every iteration after swapping how it looks like so i will simply print the nums just to see how it looks so let me just run this code and this is how it looks like so initially you will see we got two as the min value and three was there as it is and all the elements are at the same place so we are swapping two and five can you see that we got two and five swapped now two is the min value that's why and five because the initial value of i was zero and then we are swapping you can see the next iteration is three as it is because three was there where it's supposed to be in the next iteration, we are swapping 5 and 8. Now, why 8? Because it was the third iteration. And in the third iteration, your i value would be 2. And so index for 2 was 8. And you're swapping 8 with 5. That's what we are doing here. That's why we are saying nums of i. And the list goes on. You can see we got all the values sorted. So this is the advantage of using selection sort because you're not doing swapping multiple times. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.